Well, this is my camera tripod. It's an old slick brand, a Japanese brand. I've had it 20 years and it's older than that. It's got a beautiful fluid head on it. It is very smooth, the tripod and the head, but the mount, the shoe mount for the camcorder, it's not available anymore. And I need another shoe mount for my camera because I want to make a glide rail for the camera to get some pretty cool shots for you guys and some nice bits of video for when I make nice knives. So I'm going to have to make a shoe mount. Um, another shoe mount to mount onto the glide rail and possibly another one for when I'm working on the mill and on the lathe. I want to put that on an arm above the machines so that you know I can get better video footage for you. Well I don't have a, an aluminium block thick enough to make this shoe. Um, I have got a crucible, graphite crucible, but I haven't yet made a foundry to put it in. So I've made up this little crucible which I'm going to slot in some aluminium bars that I've got. This is what I'm going to make the glide rail out of. I'm going to melt this down and we're going to cast a block. Well here's an old slitting disc tin that I've got. I'm going to use this to cast the aluminium in. It's just about the right size and it'll be certainly be thick enough. Well that first bar's melted as you can see. I'm going to drop another bar in now. I put three bars in uh, which was enough to fill up that little tin. Here we are, number two's melted. I'm going to drop number three in. I'd actually put that in the forge for a few minutes to warm up and probably see the end of it had already melted. There's my three molten bars. Just scrape this dross off the top and get it poured into the tin. All that smoke coming off there was a sticker on the bottom of the tin which made a proper mess of the anvil. I'll just try and smooth this off and get it as level as I can because I know if you pour aluminium into like an open casting you always get a really rough surface on it. That'll do. And I literally just peel that can off like a corned beef tin. So onto the bandsaw and I'm just going to cut a slightly oversized piece off this, I mean, slightly oversized for the shoe mount, then I can get it on the mill and dress and clean it all. Didn't take too long to cut it. Looking at the inside in, it's quite porous and I've done a bit of research since which suggests that uh, we should put some washing soda in or something to try and take the gas bubbles out the aluminium. I mounted it on the mill. I'm just going to take a surface cut and clean this whole surface off, get it dead flat and I will turn it over and clean up the other surface. Again leaving it just slightly over thickness. It didn't really take too long to mill this out. I think that cut is 20, something like 24 millimetre. So here we go, my goal was really just to get this side dead flat and there's a little hollow in the centre there, it doesn't matter because that will be the base of the mount anyway. I know it's showing up lines but believe me that thing is just ultra dead smooth, it's like the pass is off the cutter but there's no lines or marks in the surface so I'm going to size it now and get these sides trimmed down, just again slightly oversized. Here we go, let's get this these sides trimmed down a bit. And these about 1.5 mil cuts with this 20 odd mil cutter. I could take more, it, this mill will probably cut five millimeters off this block. But uh, you know, if you take smaller passes, you just get a better finish. And this is the last fine cut, or oh, just like a finishing pass now. Then and this is it turned round and I just went on and I took uh, two millimetres off this side in two passes again. 
just to clean it up and get a decent sort of finish on it love this mill it just doesn't phase it whatsoever so rigid and now that that blocks nicely squared up and uh, parallel it's it nestles nicely into the vise and I can clean the what will be the top face up I'm just going to go across this with a one millimeter pass all the way across which should uh, then have the block perfectly parallel level and flush so here we go end of milling just checking the thickness I think I wanted 15 mil overall it's slightly over so that is good okay so I need to square the block up now so I put uh, the ends onto the vice base and then I put a square on and I squared up the two faces that I'd milled I just set them so the block ended up just slightly offset in the vise which was square to the sides then and I, I did that top side first then I turned it over and put that top side down on the base of the vise which made the block completely square so I've just dialed two millimeters in on the gauge on the vernier gauge after uh, touching down and I'm taking a 2 mil pass off this end which I will then flip over and do the other side and we'll have a completely square block I've marked out the slots on the sides of this uh, shoe just just as a reference for me because I'm not going to use the mill DROs to cut the lengths or anything I'm just going to do that visually but I'm, I will use the vertical DRO just to get me the to the to the correct depth I can't remember what it was guys it's probably like four millimeters deep maybe five I can't remember but I did it I just did it in one pass so I'm going to mill these slots out now turn it over and do the same on the other side and this is the three millimeter four flute M mill I'm using to do this went pretty easy actually did a lovely job sort of thing which would be so difficult to do without a milling machine this that's kind of both of them cut out and I'm doing a sort of half mill clean up pass on both of these that's it job done just run the file over these to deburr them but yeah it's done a, a great job let's get the other side done now and the actual block itself is still too thick so I'm just going to mill down each end now to the correct thickness the rest of the body is at size this was just the excess thickness those last were just cleaning passes just get the best finish I can and that's it job done you see the holes in this now the gas holes it just absolutely horrendous and look at the state of my beautiful mill horrible aluminium chippings everywhere so now onto this little toggle and this uh, rotates and it locks the camera into the shoe I'm gonna have a go at making this it's not gonna be too easy this because they're very fine tolerances but I've got a plate of aluminium which I'm gonna I'm just going to try first on this bit of plate and see how it goes so I'll just mark it out on there and kind of cut that out on the bandsaw after but first now as it's square I'll put it on the mill and try and freehand mill out that weird shape well I won't prolong this bit too much because basically I failed I wasn't able to mill out the circle in the center I got round the outside okay but um, a combination of me turning the handles the wrong way kind of cut across the center of the circle so I ended up with a D instead of a circle so as I got to that stage I was gonna 
give it another shot but uh, I just decided not to bother I'll show you what I produced it's absolutely horrendous okay I'm gonna have to show you this wobbly camera styly so there's the original plate there's our replacement plate I had to cheat I got Phil to do that for me my mate up the road who 3d printed it because I made one which is okay for size but I messed up the milling a quick look Ah! <laughs> horrors against milling machining so I got Phil to print one for me it's absolutely perfect I just need to make a slightly stronger spring for it the spring I've got is really thin so it's just not just quite got enough tension on it to pull the arm back um, I will do that so there I have my camera mount and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it now so I also have these components some bearings on off on switch potentiometer geared 12 volt motor idle pulley and a belt so I probably guess you probably guess what I'm doing here now well what I want to make is a motorized glide wheel glide rail camera mount thing <laughs> I, there's probably a name for these I'm not sure they're basically the camera sits on this rail and can travel along motorized for just doing different video shots the rail can be mounted horizontally, tilted or vertical. I'm going to put it on a centre tripod so it can be adjusted to run either way. And this I've got quite a bit of this track. I used it for the, uh, the gear track, the sliding door gear track on my other workshop. And there's, these are all frames off a cold conservatory or something. So that's what the section's like. So my plan is to mount these on here um, just where that one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these little bearings on there and I'm going to run on that bottom rail anyway I'll show you what I'm going to do I've got a couple of steel plates probably two mil steel that's going to be housing the camera mount so I'm going to bolt that through there so it can also be swiveled on that like so so the reason I've got two plates when I have this rail mounted vertically uh, the two plates in the camera will sit there and that top plate I want it to hinge so that it can be used like that as well so what I've done I turned down some uh, tubing, well some rod last night to make four little, to make a hinge, for a four section hinge which I'm going to weld onto the back of there. Well, I've got my hinge plate, I've left a little bit of a gap between it, between them when I welded them on so that the camera mount screw can locate but I'll also be drilling a hole in that one so that the screw can drop through it because this plate will be off the track somewhat to um, accommodate that I've just got to figure out now some kind of way that I can kind of lock that into position now because uh, if the rail is running up if the rail is running up on an angle that way I want to be able to set that level like so so it can slide up and down I suppose the easiest thing would be a little screw in there just to screw it in lift it up and down but that won't help with 90 degrees let me have a think well that's what I decided to go for just a simple little arm on there so that it can come up and it can be locked in any position so if the rail is at that sort of angle there then 
the camera can be put on very dead level. I have got a little spirit level somewhere which which I don't use. It's a tiny little thing. It's a line level. So I'll uh, I'll just probably just super glue it on here. And we can keep the tripod level all the time. So yeah, so it goes right up to vertical. I'll make a better knob than that for it. That's just something I had. It's an M an M6 uh, tap. So yeah, it locks it onto the solid. And the next thing to do will be to mount the plate on. I'm just going to uh, put an M6 in there. That's also be able, got to be able to swivel slightly. So that will rotate 180 degrees on there. I shall probably put a little spacer underneath so I'll get better rotation on that as well. Well with some angle iron I've, I've simply drilled some holes in there and I've made up this roller, little roller carriage that will sit underneath the, uh, the plate. So I'm just going to go and weld them on now. Hopefully get them at the correct angle and we can test it out on the track. Actual speed. So it's sliding really nice under its own weight. What I need to do is just put some kind of locator to centre it into that track because it's all just sitting on them at literally 45 it'll have a tendency to do that. So I just need to centre it in there with perhaps just a little pin. Ideally them bearings could have done with a concave face so that they could have just locked onto the track better but we're going with what we've got. And um, that's just tack welded on. So I'll put some more welds on this now and uh, move on to the next step. Yeah, let's make this guide roller. Got a little piece of brass there, so I'm just going to drill the hole through the middle, which will hold the bolt four millimeters. I just center, put a center spot on it so I can drill. <laughs> Sixteen. Fourteen point four. Do a cleaning cup, and that'll do, I think. Yeah, if, if I machine a tool that will just carve out the perfect slot in there, then I can just go down to the required width so it just sits nicely within the two bits of track. I think that will be it. It goes on but it's a little bit tight so I'll just relieve it slightly on that side. Yeah you know what guys that'll do the job. Keep it locked in place. I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna go and part that off now. Well just gonna center this on the track mark a line I'm gonna put the uh, bear, little bearing right in the center of that. So it'll sit about there somewhere. Just drill a, a four mil hole through that. So yeah, bolted that on there. And it'll take, ideally really, I suppose I should have put one at each end, but that's gonna help it a lot. Stop it doing that mad rocking. Bit of weight on it. Yeah, it'd be fine that. It's 
it's not binding up at all so that was the objective okay guys I've done all I can do really at the moment the next step will be to get all these little parts fitted so that we can have a motorized table so I'll leave it there for the for this next bit we're going to need a Kaylee so we'll get we'll find a Kaylee and uh, we'll get this thing finished so this shot is the camera literally just resting on there under its own power gliding down that rail which I have got to stop before it hits the block all right guys thanks for watching thanks to my patrons for your support and I'll see you all soon bye for now